Um, and I think it just kind of colors the level of uh, challenge that they're facing there at Vanderbilt now. And I'm hopeful that, you know, when they hired Clark Lee, one of the things that happened was they said, you know, we're, we're, we are committing to improving the facilities and providing this program the resources that it needs to try to compete in this conference. You know, Derek Mason didn't have those resources. Bobby Johnson didn't have those. James Franklin. And they were able to, at times, have levels of achievement. Derek Mason won nine games. There's some, there's some years where you're sitting there going, wow, 2016. That was a heck of a year for Vanderbilt. 2018, bowl season. So you think that there's a chance to where they should at least be uh, 500 or better, especially now that we're back to 12 games and there's non-conference scheduling, et cetera. Um, the other day was, I'm not going to say disappointing, it was troubling because I think 2020 took a pretty significant toll on a lot of programs, but it was a, a not a fatal blow, but one that has staggered that program so far this season. You know, they got a chance to get right this week versus UConn. I don't even know whether they're favored. I'd be surprised if they, they are. They are. UConn's considered the worst team in. So there you go. So, all right. So, and, and, and we kind of speculated as much in the game. So you just you, you start talking about the team that's enjoying success and, and one that it was reminiscent of 2012 Texas A&M versus Auburn where you're sitting there going, oh, yeah. we actually did that game, and I'm going, this is hard to watch. I, I was shocked. Yeah, people always talk about Coach Chizik and you know, what happened. That game happened. That's what happened, yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, look, that, that was, he had a lot of overhaul on that staff, yeah. and it's amazing how coaching matters. And it's not just coached by one guy. There's other guys that are on that staff and yeah, a couple it, of guys on that staff that Yeah, I, I ran there. it and I didn't run into him directly, but a friend of mine saw somebody who was one of the coordinators on that staff, no names, and he's he's now a coordinator uh, in high school ball. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and, and, and I don't one, mean that disparagingly, but that's that year that, it was not a good year, you know, and and, and was the not other a coordinator college coach. Yeah. No, and the other guy's a head coach and, and had a big win the other day. So it's just yeah. you know, coaching matters. And the other thing too, I think, is that you know, so so Vanderbilt. Part of it is, and took Derek Mason some you tweaks. Identified the guy stuff. I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Oh, okay. So it was just, um, it, it was Saturday was tough sledding. There's no doubt. Uh, let's look ahead. Uh, people are, are are whether they're getting ahead of themselves or not. It's it's justified in talking about the Razorbacks as they head to Georgia, uh, but they do have this week and then next week against Ole Miss and and, I, and people can say reality or not it doesn't matter at this point they, they have they have obliterated the expectations no doubt I mean even last year they were kind of the Cinderella story and, and there were questions when Sam Pittman got the job and and you you kind of those are warranted I think uh concerns you can call them or at least curiosities we're going never been a head guy never been a coordinator how often does this actually work and kind of the mold at that time was, well, it worked at LSU. And we see that the difficulties that they're having there. Is it owing to just the head coach? Not necessarily. The idea that they've already got four wins. And they've got two of the best wins, I think. When you talk about as far as wins based on what we thought teams were coming into the season, they got the two best wins of the season. They beat Texas. They beat Texas A&M. And that's not just relative to what we thought Arkansas was going to be. It's been a great story. Do we know that they're great football teams? Yeah, that's tough to say. I mean, Texas A&M, for example, were they at full strength? No. I mean, they, they we're already in our backup quarterback. We saw them last week, A&M, and they've got some real problems. And it's not just quarterback. That offensive line is a problem. And their inability to get separation at receiver, a very real problem. And that was a costly victory for Arkansas. I mean, there was a lot of guys. You know, you see K.J. Jefferson leave the lineup. Traylon Burks leaves the lineup. you got two offensive linemen. They're playing hurt and played well. Um, so – Already through the first month of the season, Arkansas has done a fantastic job. And you hope that there will be some level of, of sustaining that. Because if it doesn't, from a win-loss standpoint, my concern would be you look back on this year and it's like, ah, just another year for Arkansas. This is one of the more difficult schedules that anybody faced right. in the country. And uh, they've handled it really well so far. But as you point out, it, it gets tougher. It gets tougher on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. When you have to play the SEC West and then add at Georgia, it <laughs> – Yeah, no favors done there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a, it's, a, it's insane. Let's talk about the other game uh, Saturday that uh, so many people are excited about. And you know, everyone's asking, well, Lane Kiffin did this last year. Can he do it again? Uh, what, what is the path for Ole Miss? 
Well, you got to get stops. I mean, even if this offense is as good as it was a year ago, and, and part of it is, you know, we can't look at it in a vacuum where compare this year's offense to last year's offense. Well, neither one of these teams are the same. So does, does this year's offense get to play last year's Alabama defense? No. They don't, right? And, and that was the first year of the Jeff Lebby Lane Kiffin combination offensively. And Jeff Lebby's the play caller, and you can see Baylor all throughout that offense as far as where he comes from in a coaching tree philosophy. But you can see Lane Kiffin kind of enmeshed in there as well. And now you're in year two, and now you've got Matt Corral in year two. And there was no John Rice Plumley. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't quarterback. None of that discussion was there. And it looks that way on offense, that they're further along in what they could have been and what they were a season ago. But they don't get to play last year's Alabama defense. And we can say that Ole Miss's defense is better. And it is relative to last year's Ole Miss defense. How good is this defense? And are they going to be playing in an environment that is going to be hostile towards the tide? No, they aren't. So when you think about the last time when Alabama went out there and everybody's going, boy, you know, Florida gave them a game. They did. And I'll not take anything away from that. And yet, that crowd, that environment for the first time coming off a of COVID year when you're at 20% capacity, right, and you've got all these new faces, the idea that they wouldn't have some procedural difficulties, come on, of course they would. That's not going to be an issue in this game or shouldn't be. And you're still facing a defense that is better than it was a year ago. But is it that much better to where you're saying the outcome is different? And I have to point out that Ole Miss's big win so far was over Louisville in the opener at a neutral site. The other two wins are, are not very compelling, albeit impressive in the box score. You're not sitting there going, we know a lot about this team at this point. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.